Good morning and Happy New Year and welcome to Trinity Episcopal Church on this second Sunday after Christmas. We've learned a few things this morning. Tech is great when it actually works, but it does require people to operate the tech. So thanks to Michael Prestigard for uh, pinch hitting uh, over here running things. And uh, also, if you think 2021 is automatically going to be better than 2020, that may be a case of a triumph of hope over experience. Having said that, we are pressing forward with, uh, for one thing, uh, coming up at 3 o'clock this afternoon, the world premiere of the uh, online post-Christmas service with uh, Trinity in Prairie du Chien and St. Andrews in Monroe and possibly other services. You can view that via Zoom or on Trinity's Facebook page or on Trinity's YouTube, YouTube channel uh, coming up at 3 o'clock. At least that's where it's supposed to be. <clears throat> After that, uh, this being the first Wednesday of the month, the 
uh, monthly Taize service is Wednesday at 5.30. Again, online before that. Uh, Bible, actually, that's not correct. Compton's after that at 7 o'clock. Bible study will resume next Wednesday, the um, 13th at uh, noon. And uh, the prophet Isaiah is the subject. And uh, get an invitation from Merrily Backstrand in order to join virtual office hours, of course, this uh, coming Wednesday afternoon, 1 to 4. One other thing, the uh, annual meeting is uh, in four weeks, January 31st. We pick that because there's no playoff game that day. Uh, and uh, that'll be when we decide on such things as the budget and also who will be serving on the vestry and the wardens. Having said all of that, and I think I'm off this list here, let us worship God together, beginning with hymn 87. God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
first reading is from Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I'm going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them, the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together. A great company, they shall return here. With weeping, they shall come. And with consolations, I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd, a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from the hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 84. We'll start it and end it with the response, reading together. Happy are they who put their trust in you. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs. For the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand in my own room. And to stand at the threshold of the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is both sun and shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk with integrity. O Lord of hosts, happy are they who put their trust in you. Happy are they who put their trust in you. Glory be to the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us and the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. <clears throat> After the wise men had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there till I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, Out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, up, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who are seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in the place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. After being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled, he will be called a Nazarene. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, good morning. I'd like to focus our attention on three of the texts that we have before us, the gospel, the Old Testament lesson, and the psalm. We began with some thinking about what the word of the Lord truly means. In our ongoing Bible study on Isaiah, we have discovered that the concept of the word of the Lord is a very specific one. It's very dynamic and powerful. The word of the Lord comes to the prophet, and it seizes the prophet, and it sometimes it terrorizes the prophet. The prophet feels overshadowed and becomes a messenger who is powerfully compelled to deliver this word to those who would hear. The word of the Lord literally sustains the prophet. It becomes, strangely for all of its difficulty, food. The scholar of the Hebrew scriptures, Gerhard von Rott, points out this central aspect of the dynamic word of God when he writes about the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah tells us something of the effect of the word of the Lord on him. He says in one place that the word became a joy to him and that he ate it like a starving man. When he speaks of eating the divine words, we should not take this in too spiritual a way and regard it as metaphor and hyperbole. It is perfectly possible that a prophet even felt physically dependent on the word, and so, in a sense, was literally kept alive by it. Our gospel lesson this morning, I believe, is a place where the word of the Lord comes alive once more. The word of the Lord here comes in the form of dreams, where the spirit of the Lord speaks to Joseph and motivates him to go to Egypt. That phrase that kept recurring this morning, get up, is a motivating phrase. But to Egypt, Egypt and Israel's saving history, we remember that we have been here before. In the book of Genesis, Joseph, the youngest son of Jacob, is carried off into Egypt and becomes a slave there. Joseph, however, persists. And dreams help Joseph, just like they helped Joseph of later times in Matthew's gospel. 
Joseph in Egypt interpret dreams, interprets dreams, and draws the attention of Pharaoh, and he rises to be an able and wise administrator under Pharaoh's rule. He meets his own family who flee to Egypt to avoid starvation. In terms of the word of the Lord being powerful and showing up in new and various contexts, we should say that this Joseph, when he arrives with Holy Mary and the baby Jesus, has been here before. The people of Israel have been here before. And when it comes to babies and the killing of babies, the killing of babies causing Joseph and Mary and Jesus to flee, the persistent killing going on in the first century AD by this jealous and vicious King Herod, appointed by Rome as a ruler over Jerusalem and Palestine. When it comes to this killing, we should remember that the Israelite people have been here before. We should remember that one of the pharaohs decreed that Jewish babies would, should be quickly killed following their birth because the Jewish slave population was getting too big. We should remember the baby Moses being hidden in the bulrushes. And we should note the parallels. Joseph and Joseph. Egypt is a sanctuary from starvation before it becomes a place of slavery, and Egypt now is a temporary sanctuary. The saving of the prophet baby Moses, and now the saving of the baby Jesus, a prophet in the tradition of Moses and Elijah. You might remember Moses and Elijah appearing with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. There's a tradition there. If the word of the Lord can be alive and, and well and appear in new settings, we should also understand that the very saving history of Israel can also be alive and appear in new settings. We should understand that Matthew, in writing his gospel proclamation, his good news proclamation, is writing to a largely Jewish audience who would quickly understand what it means to flee to Egypt and who would quickly understand what it would mean for Joseph and Mary and Jesus to come forth out of Egypt, that place of slavery and bondage, in a literally a new and symbolic exodus. The people of God were led forth by the presence of Yahweh and his servant Moses in an exodus from bondage and slavery. And now these three lonely figures bear the weight of that first exodus as they too are led forth by the spirit of the Holy One of Israel, led out from Israel to that small town of Nazareth, where Jesus will grow into adulthood and find his own mission. We should remember also that Matthew is writing to a people in bondage as well. People living under Roman rule, the oppression of a vicious King Herod. He is writing to a people who also need an exodus, a people who need liberation. The word of the Lord and the saving history of Israel both are dynamic things. And now the question arises, can this word show up in our lives as well? We need an exodus. Can this message about Jesus being the Messiah, can this new exodus of Jesus liberate us as well? The prophet Hosea proclaims, when Israel was a child, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. And the word of the Lord bring life to our lives as well. Well, now we find ourselves in a new year. A new year always is a time of hope and expectation, and 2021 should be no different. Our psalm this morning presents us with a sense that beyond any place of desolation, there will be a place of springs. And I would like us this morning to think about that spiritually. Here are a few verses from our psalm this morning, Psalm 84. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose heart are set on the pilgrim's way. 
Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. Some phrases from this psalm might also be the word of the Lord to us this morning as we begin a new year and feel the burden of the COVID dynamic pandemic and all of the losses that surround us. Happy are the people whose strength is in you. Invites us to look to God prayerfully and to ground ourselves in God's holy presence. Whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way reminds us that Joseph of old, the people of Israel themselves, Joseph and Mary of Nazareth, and we too are on a journey and need the guidance of the Holy Spirit. We also identify with those who go through the desolate valley. This phrase reminds me of those who grieve. All those who find their lives being shaped by the forces of this pandemic. Those who have lost family, those in the midst of this disease. Those who've gone through this and other desolate valleys. The deserts of the Negev and the, of Palestine's dry places are now in our world transformed into ICU deserts, deserts of food lines, miles-long deserts of people waiting for tests or vaccinations. The image of fresh rains and pools of water bringing life to a dry land, we can also understand as we wait for better times and look for the word of the Lord to be a living word in our own experience. Finally, I'd like to close with some hopeful, powerful images from the prophet Jeremiah. The prophet Jeremiah, we began with earlier, and we remember that he was the one that feasts on the word of the Lord like a starving man. As a messenger of Yahweh, the prophet proclaims the Lord's word, see, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together, a great company, they shall return here. Perhaps we too find ourselves like starving people looking for a powerful word to claim us. So let this message be directed to us. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead, lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. We are among the blind and the lame as we enter this new year, many of us, and we need that straight path upon which not to stumble. And we need to return Return, though, not to an old life and to old patterns, but return to a new place in which we are more spiritually grounded, more prayerful, more filled with gratitude for simplest things, more capable of thinking of others, more capable, in the words of the prophet, being radiant over the goodness of the Lord. Let us return there. Let us lift up heart, mind, and spirit in 2021 and once more seek and live in the healing presence of the Lord of life, the God with us, Emmanuel. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Let us pray. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Dear people of God, God has pitched a tent in our midst. God's word has taken our flesh. Let us come together in holy words of petition, saying, Lord, have mercy. That the peace proclaimed by prophets of old might dwell in every place where enmity lives and where violence threatens. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That God's dwelling among us in Jesus might lead us to shelter the homeless, feed the hungry, support those in ministries of compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That those suffering from COVID-19 here and throughout the world, those in the midst of economic distress or grief and loss, those serving at the front lines, that all of these and more might feel the healing and encouraging presence of the wonderful counselor in the midst of this Christmas season. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the love of God in our midst might work for the healing of the sick and the uplifting of those who are downcast. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Especially we pray for Bill, Bob, Amy, Abby, Beth, Catherine, Carolyn, Karen, Father Jeffrey, Greg, David, Jeanette, Judy, Andy, Wes, Betty, Father Sam and Sue, Harry, Rich, Rock, Joan, Doris, Linda, Naomi, June, and Evan. Oh God of mystery and wonder, your word has the power to dispel our darkness. Your light speaks to our hearts. Strengthen us in our spiritual journey. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hymn 96.
us pray. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one the things earthly and heavenly, fill you with his joy and peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.